Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to this instance of the Entrea Committee meeting. Today is Tuesday, July 18th, and uh, we have two presentations into the agenda. The first one will be a presentation about uh, a new way of tunneling traffic between hosts, which is, uh, I think it's called XMask. I'm not sure if I pronounce it correctly. And this presentation will be given by Shenkai. The second presentation is uh, from Kumar, and that's about uh, Windows uh, uh, containerization for Open Switch in Windows. So uh, let's get started with today's meeting. So um, Shenkai, please go ahead and feel free to share your screen if you have anything to, to uh, if you have a presentation to share. Okay, thank you. Uh, could you see my slides? Yes, yes, I can. Okay, thank you. Uh, may I start now? Uh, oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, please go ahead. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Shen Kai Lin from Shanghai Jiao Tong University, and my supervisor is Shi Zhen Zhao. Today, I'm going to introduce my latest research, uh, XMask, to you all. Uh, I will show the research background, the design of XMask, and the evaluation of it in this talk. Uh, as we know, there are many kinds of container networks. In the host network, uh, in the host network, uh, containers share the host network namespace and the host IP. It can get performance that are close to the bare metal network, but the containers need to coordinate ports with other containers. Then Mac VLAN and IP VLAN can emulate virtual NICs in the containers and also get performance that are close to the bare metal network. But the underlying network needs to be able to root the container IP. And the bridge network, which is called no in cap mode in Entria, uh, each, each container has its own IP, its own IP and uh, a container packets are directly forwarded into the underlay network. The underlay network is also needed to be able to route the container IP. In conclusion, all of these three networks can offer near native performance, but hurt the flexibility of the application and the underlay network. And another choice from academic community is Slim. It shares the socket of the root namespace to the container. Uh, thus, the containers can use the underlay, net, uh, underlay stack directly. And it can, also, uh, it can also achieve the performance close to the uh, bare metal network, but it only supports uh, connection-based protocols, for example, TCP. Uh, another common choice is the uh, overlay network. It builds a virtual network above the physical network, uh, which provides full, uh, full flexibility and uh, universality for containers, but it incurs significant communication overhead. Uh, we evaluate the TCP throughput, TCP RR, and uh, the CPU utilization with different number of parallel flows. Uh, as shown in the result, uh, compared with the host network, the throughput of Entrier is 25% uh, lower at most, and the CPU utilization is 142% uh, higher at most. Uh, as, for, as for the TCP RR test, the transaction rate is 55% 50, lower at most, and the CPU utilization is 37% 30, 37, uh, higher at most. Uh, we then uh, analyze uh, the overhead of the container overlay network. The orange box uh, denotes the extra data pass uh, of the container overlay network. We use the perf tool to start the CPU time of each part of in the data pass, and we find that about half of the CPU time is taken up in the extra data pass. We call this extra overhead. And according to the analysis of the data bus, we can classify the extra overhead into three classes that are encapsulating, intra-host routing, and policy enforcing. So can we catch 
the results of this or height? The answer is yes. And this is what XMask does. As we know, the encapsulation and intro host routing get the similar results uh, for the same container destination IP. And the stateless policy enforcing gets the similar results for the same flow. And XMask tries to catch the results of this process uh, to avoid repetitive uh, processing on packets. And this is the architecture of XMask. Uh, XMask caches results of uh, encapsulating intra host routing and uh, uh, again, the ingress, egress and ingress cache and the policy results of policy enforcing in the policy cache. Uh, the results of encapsulating and routing are queried by uh, pod destination IP and the policy enforcing result is uh, queried by the five, five tuple of the flow. Uh, here denote as flow key. Uh, as a cache, we only support the stateless policies. We also need four programs to implement the five functionalities. Uh, to make them easy to be deployed in the kernel, we implement these programs by eBPF uh, uh, at TC Hawk. And as for the programs, the egress and ingress program uh, curate the caches and operate on the packets. And the egress int pro program and the ingress int program uh, handle the cache miss caches, cases. And the forwarding of the packets relies on a redirect, which can skip all the overhead on the data paths. And besides, we also need two user space programs as user interface and diamond. Uh, then I will introduce the design of XMask uh, in following three aspects. Uh, first, to maintain the cache transparency, uh, we should make sure that XMask is transparent to both application and the underlying network. Uh, the ingress path, uh, we hook the egress program on the host, host side of the VEs pi. Here, the program uh, curates the cache and uh, handles the egress packets from the containers. Uh, it processes the packets in the following steps. First, it prepares 50, uh, 50 bytes of the outer headers to the uh, packets to a uh, wakeslan like packets and, up, and then update the uh, inner MAC header uh, as shown here. The 60, 64 byte uh, headers is cached in the, in the egress cache. Uh, and then it just it adjusts the length and the checksum file in the outer IP, IP header and get the UDP source port by hashing as in kernel. Uh, finally, if the policy cache uh, shows that the flow is allowed to egress, then the egress program will redirect the packet to the physical NIC. And the ingress program does a similar thing. On the receiving of a WebSlam packet, the ingress program first curates the uh, cache, then the program strip uh, strips the outer wakeslan headers and update the wakeslan uh, the the mic header. Uh, finally, uh, if the flow is allowed in the policy cache, the packets will be redirected to the target container interface. And the redirect data path is used in the egress and the ingress program uh, is provided by the TC eBPF. The egress program uses TC redirect. Uh, which can redirect packets, uh, packets from uh, TC ingress to TC egress. And the ingress program uses the redirect function called TC redirect peer, uh, which can redirect packets from TC ingress to TC ingress. And, as, uh, and to fully utilize the power of uh, redirect, uh, we added a helper function to the kernel, which can redirect packets from TC egress to TC egress. And with this hyper function, the egress program can handle the packets earlier and thus eliminate the namespace traversing overhead. And in the following discussion, XMask uses this, uh, uses this uh, optional improvement by default. And another important design issue is uh, how to handling 
and the cache misses. Uh, Xmask initialized the caches with the help of the standard overlay network, uh, for example, and trier. Uh, for the egress paths, if cache misses happens on in, as the egress program, uh, either the egress cache or the policy cache, the program will mark the packet and pass it to the overlay network, for example, and trier. Uh, and then it will be normally processed by the overlay network and uh, arrive at the egress of the physical clinic. Here, the egress int program starts the initialization process. And it will update the outer headers and the interface index uh, as the value of the pod destination IP uh, to the egress cache and mark the flow as a load in the policy cache. And, uh, and now finish the initialized process. And the ingress pass uh, performs just the same. The ingress program marks the packet on, on cache missing and the ingress int program initializes the ingress cache and the, the policy cache. And to properly cooperate with the connection track module uh, in cache mishandling, uh, we should make sure that the egress and ingress paths perform the same for the same flow. That is, either both go through Xmask or both go through the overlay network. So the solution is Xmask only process the packets when both ingress and egress are cached. And the third part of the design is cache coherency. Uh, here, uh, it means that the cache should perform correctly when the overlay network changes. For example, when the ports are deleted or policies are updated, the cache must change accordingly. Uh, and currently, we make Xmask to invalid all the, all the policy cache when policy changed and uh, invalid the corresponding ingress or egress cache on port changing. And uh, we are still working in process on this part. And so this uh, design of bikes mask, uh, any questions? Okay, okay. Okay, yeah, please, and... please go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, okay. Okay, any questions? Doesn't look at the moment we have any questions, but you know, likely after you do the, you show the evaluation and the results, probably there will be more. Oh, okay, okay, thank you. And uh, the, then I will introduce the evaluation results of Xmask, and we take Entrier as the baseline and uh, the host network as the upper bound. Uh, we first evaluate the throughput and the request response transaction rate. Uh, with different number of parallel flows. And compared to Entrier, Xmask improves the TCP throughput by at most 25% uh, and with the CPU authentication uh, at most 50% lower. And for TCP RR experiment, Xmask improves the transaction rate by at most 105% and with uh, the CPU authentication uh, at most 22% uh, lower. Uh, again, compared with Entrier, for UDP experiments, the results show that Xmask improves the throughput by at most 54% uh, and the transaction rate by at most 63%. And in both experiments, the CPU utilization is very close to Entrier. And we also evaluate whether the new redirect hyper function uh, brings performance improvement. But un unfortunately, uh, the throughput R and the CPU utilization remains almost the same with or without uh, the new redirect hyper function. And then we evaluate Xmask on some popular distributed application. And for memcached, the average latency is 29% lower with Xmask, uh, while the soft IRQ utilization is 60% lower compared to Entrier. And for Cycle, the average latency is 26% lower with Xmask, uh, while the soft IRQ utilization is 44% lower compared to Entrier. 
And finally, for NGINX, we evaluate the HTTP1 and HTTP3 latency. For HTTP1, the average latency is 29% lower, while the soft IRQ utilization is 98% lower compared to entry. And for HTTP3, the soft interrupt utilization is 97 and lower, while the latency remains the same. And in conclusion, by introducing cache to the ORA network, uh, XMask meets all the important requirements, including performance, flexibility, and universality. And that's all for this talk. And any questions? Well, uh, first of all, thanks, uh, thanks, thank you very much for uh, contributing uh, to this uh, this talk to the Antria Community Meeting. We really appreciate it. Um, the only question I have is just a curiosity about uh, how you deploy this solution. Uh, I am not, I did not fully understand if this is something that uh, you can deploy independently of the CNI and then it works in the same way with the Caligo and Tria, Cilium and the others, or whether instead if you need, uh, um, if you have a logic that uh, is specific to every CNI and whether you have to make some changes to the CNI plugin itself to deploy it. Oh, thank you for your questions. And uh, actually, Xmask is, uh, at first, Xmask is not a CNI, and uh, it's actually like a plugin of uh, CNI, for example, and share. And uh, Xmask is implemented by EBPF, and and the EBPF can just plug in into the kernel and uh, without uh, without the notice to the CNI or the application. And uh, it can just cooperate properly with Antria without any changes by Antria. Uh, I don't know, is this of your question? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, I believe so. So basically you can deploy Xmask uh, completely transparently to Antria. So basically you don't need to have uh, code in Antria that is aware that Xmask is running, like changing the configuration of Antria for enabling Xmask, that's that's not needed. And similarly, yes. Xmask will be able to work, for instance, both with Antria and Calico, depending on which CNI the Kubernetes cluster is running. Yes. Okay, understood, thanks. Okay, uh, thank you. Yeah, I have one question, uh, like uh, what will be like connectivity, like uh, usually we use uh, OBS. So uh, is there like a Linux bridge you will be using? And then on overlay, you are usually using eBPF based uh, implementation for X mask queue. Uh, sorry, sir, could you please lower? So, uh, sorry, sorry. <clears throat> okay, so, uh, how the connectivity between container will uh, will happen? Like, is it via ETH pair and Linux bridge? Will that be there, or it is like uh, it will not be there? Uh, it could be what? Sorry, um, okay. the, the network. Yeah. Is... Okay. So uh, okay. So let me put this way. So uh, usually for uh, container to container uh, connectivity. Uh, uh, okay. CNI, uh, which is there, uh, we use uh, like uh, open v switch uh, to connect yes. uh, you know, the, for the data path, right? So yes. uh, this is in parallel to that, or it is on top of uh, which which will be used like, uh, uh, like yes. it, be, it can be used along with the uh, open v switch or uh, it is on, in yes. parallel to, we can remove open v switch and we can use this. Uh, yes, it, it can cooperate with open with switch and it actually it doesn't it doesn't require any type of uh, uh, intra host routing and I don't know if your question. Yeah, so yeah, correct. So it will not yeah, be yeah. Uh, like you will not be using any Linux bridge or. Uh... Yes, yes, yes. It can use with Linux bridge or OBS. And it doesn't require any type of intra host routing. Actually, it don't care this. Uh, it just needs a. Uh, uh, the, you just need the wax line packet to be properly encapsulated by the uh, originally uh, standard overlay network. You don't care what how to how to forward this packet. Okay, fine, good, thanks. Okay, thank you. 
Yeah, if, uh, <clears throat> if I can rebound on uh, Salvatore's question about deployment and uh, coexisting with another CNI, it feels to me that you, even though you say you can deploy this with Calico, with uh, Cilium, with Entria, anything that has an overlay network, it seems to me that you're losing a lot of features, uh, right? Like Entria, I mean, users use Entria, for example, because of stateful network policies, because of egress, because of all, all sorts of other networking features. But it seems that by using XMAX, XMask, the only thing you can do is essentially forwarding between pods. Or... Yes. Yes, you may lose some uh, some features in the original uh, CNI, but uh, I'm 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 still working this in process. How to uh, cooperate properly with uh, the the features, and actually, uh, and actually, as you know, Cinem and uh, Calico, uh, they just they also use eBPF as in their data path. So, uh, XMask could not deploy with Cinem or Calico. And so we use, I, we use Entria as an example here. So it could conflict with the other eBPF programs. Yes, it you... may it may have some complex. Okay. Because because Cinema also uses the PC hook at uh, as a uh, physical nick and uh, XMask use ne also needs this uh, TC hook. Uh, so there's a uh, complex. I guess in some case, you want your program execute before CDMs once, and uh, in other case, you want to execute after them, right? Yeah. When handling the cache. Uh, sorry? Sorry, what, what's uh, your Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I mean, I guess the problem is, in some cases, you want your uh, XMask eBPF program to be executed before I guess, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, but yes, in other right. cases, you, you want to after them. Yeah. Okay. Yes, that you're that right. sounds com complicated. Yes, yes, yes you're right. Uh, could, that, could that design work for other uh, connection case like uh, from port to external. Uh, could the, uh, could the eBPF ca cache the result and uh, forward the uh, traffic from VTH to physic NIC directly without going this? We uh, X mask only focus on the port to port uh, communication and. Uh, Port to external, we didn't we didn't focus on it, and uh, maybe it also works, and but we didn't design it. Uh, but did you need to figure out, or did you need to differentiate differentiate which the traffic is? Uh, do you have a classifier to check the destination IP or some other way? To, to 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 differentiate whether this should be handled by XMAS. Uh, yes, yeah, yes. Uh, currently, it is handled by uh, actually in the cache miss in the cache miss handling case. The egress uh, the egress int, for example, egress int program uh, only initialize cache if the uh, the egressing packet is a wasteland packet. And uh, uh, only only a Wixlan packet could uh, have have its port destination IP in the cache, and in the egress program, it uh, if it couldn't find the cache, and the egress program will don't count it, and uh, for the external packet, it will just pass to the for example entry. Uh, currently, I had noticed by this way. I see. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. And it seems uh, you have changed the, the design of XMask a, a lot since the last time I had discussion uh, with you about uh, how it handle how, how it will encapsulate the inner packets. Right now, I think it's almost transparent to 
Sheng I yes. and uh, and yeah. yeah. Yes, they have uh, updated the design, and uh, uh, actually the core design is uh, still the cache, and uh, but the story changed a lot. Yeah, I feel the current design, uh, maybe more a uh, kind, uh, maybe more general, and uh, could be uh, applied to more scenarios than the previous one. I think so. Um, I, yeah. I, I have a sorry, I have a question on the policy enforcement side. Um, so if I understand correctly, you were saying that you know when a packet is um for uh initiated from a pod to another, um, if it's the first connection, you create a flow key in a policy cache, then you sort of like let entry determine whether the policy should be um connected or dropped, and you learn that yes. and you put it in the policy cache. Now yes. you're you're also saying that if there were any policy changes, this become obsolete because you know you you don't want it to use the policy cache again. I'm just wondering how do you actually detect that there is a policy change in that case? Uh, uh, that's a good question, and uh, we are still working this in process. And uh, currently, in my in my mind, I think uh, maybe we should. Uh, uh, monitor the commands of, for example, CNI, for example, and Trier. And uh, uh, if there's a new command, and uh, we should uh, uh, evaluate all the cache. And uh, this still working process. We have uh, we have not uh, finished this design. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Because because from from my point of view, I'm thinking that you know the policy changes do happen, right? And and yeah. also, I wanted to also, you know, stress on the visibility here because, from my understanding, if the policy do change and there's nothing, uh, the policy cache doesn't alter at all, it will cause a packet, you know, maybe to drop to be dropped and yeah. and traders don't even know about it. Right now, yeah. people will be wondering why it is dropped. And now, you know, they need to know about you know this sex mask and maybe do some dumping there to 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 yeah. figure out you know why it is getting dropped which can be uh, crazy yeah. you know yes um, yes that's uh important is important yes. question thank you thank you um, but in most uh, implementations uh their policies are stateful and uh, established connection can continue work uh, even after the policy changes Oh, perhaps yes, that, that, that that's correct. A... That's correct. I'm I'm just saying that you know I I don't know how they invalidate this cache because to me it seems that uh, for a certain flow tuple the the cache will stay there right unless there's a unless there's a uh, change. Yeah. Uh, in... yeah. Yeah. Uh, I I also wondered uh, is there any value to do the invalidation given the is established connection could uh, continue work uh, in most implementations. So it seems that uh, you don't need to even watch the policy change and uh, uh, invalidate the cache if this is, if the cache is per connection. Uh, because because they don't know if uh, of uh, like you mentioned that uh, the entire may deploy many complex uh, policies and uh, some flow may uh, may be affected by a new policy that uh, uh, that that just deployed to the entire and uh, maybe in entire it should be denied but uh, in entire in xmask it does not know uh, so I think in this uh, in this scenario we should invalidate the cache and uh, yes, uh, but, but does this... the cache work for other connections or it just uh, work for a existing connection that has been established? Yes, yes this is also a solution, but uh, uh, yes, this is also a solution, and we we have, have we have not decided to how to design this part. Uh, if I understand correctly, uh, this policy catch doesn't try connection, right? We just use five tuples to be the flow key. Yeah, yes, five tuples. 
It's not really connecting tracker. Right? That's my understanding. Okay. Oh, yes. It's only yeah, that's, that's why that's why I was worried about this because you know once the five tuple is there, there's no clear um, signal that you know this will be kicked out of the cache. Um, so so essentially, you know, we needed a mechanism to to uh, basically tell the tech cache that there is some changes in the policy that may need this to be updated. Otherwise, the action will just take control over and over again. Uh, yes, yes, that's a problem. I see. Uh, 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 hi, hi, Shang Kai. Uh, so in, in my understanding, the, the first packet, packet which creates the new connection will get the cache miss results. Uh, so I guess it could introduce a lower performance for the first packet processing. So did you evaluate uh, it compared to the original scenario. Yes, we have uh, uh, we have evaluated this on the uh, elder design, but not the newer design. But uh, actually, the EBPF program doesn't in incur significant overhead compared to the original uh, standard overlay network. And so the performance decay is not significant. Thanks. But you are right, the first packet will go through the standard overlay network. And because there's uh, extra uh, eBPF programs, and uh, uh, it may have some uh, little performance influence. Got it. But Thanks. On, only the first packet. And uh, sure. a, a, lot of serv uh, a lot of traffic in Kubernetes is uh, service traffic. So is, would that be supported at all? Because in that case, uh, at, at the VES interface, so destination IP is, um, is a service IP. It's not the pod, pod IP. Uh, so we have not considering that, that situation. And we uh, currently, we only focus on the basic pod to pod communication. And, uh, uh, we may extend this design to your, uh, for example, service to pod communication well my point is most of pod to pod communications in kubernetes or uh, i mean use a service uh, use a service name right or service ip um, uh, you, you i know don't... i know yeah i know and uh, yes yes the service to pod uh, communication uh, pod to service. Uh, current, uh, Yes, part of service communication currently did not support it in XMAST and uh, we may update our design. Yes, thank you. It seems that there's a problem that uh, uh, because the EP ground, uh, the, the, I don't know how to call it, the, the left and the top uh, E, EBPL program. E program. E program. Yeah, yeah. E program where we see port service IP as a destination. However, in the physical NIC, it may have been changed to port IP. So it's hard to associate the two connection. Right. If uh, yeah. take. Yes. Okay. Yes. May I, I see. Uh... I see the potential value more like maybe for uh, secondary networks and, and special applications that require more performance and, and fewer features, as opposed to something that could be applied to all the primary network interfaces, because then you're losing a lot of features. But maybe uh, for telco applications or applications where you use a secondary network for the pods um for a, a specialized purpose and maybe that could be an interesting solution to accelerate networking yes yes and we are trying to not to affect other features um, may i ask what, what's the future plan for this project for example, to do you do you want to make this project a, a general solution for all things like 
uh, calico. So I know they they have like uh, using EBPF. So do you plan to like to make this project uh, can works with uh, CDM or calico or or are you 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 plan to like uh, develop more features for for projects like Antria? I I wonder what's the yeah what's the plan for the future design. Uh, our plan first is to uh, uh, first I I want to cooperate this project with uh, for example Antria and uh, for Selim because this uh, EVPF complex uh, so uh, we may we may work on this later and uh, first I want to solve the problems that uh, mentioned before for example service to port communication and uh, some uh, don't uh, and uh, uh, cooperate with other features in Antria and uh, uh, communication with uh, egress and uh, so on. And so cooperate with Selim may be a later, la later solution, later choice. Cool, thank you. I have one last question. Uh, you, you mentioned that this works for stateless policy only. Yes. Uh, may I know why? Uh, uh, because, because in cache, in my understanding in cache, uh, the, the cache only support the stateless cache. And uh, of course, if you want to support stateful policies and uh, you can encode the state into the so-called flow key, uh, flow key and uh, convert the policy to a stateless policy. And, uh, and now Xmask can support it, the stateful policy. By default, so it only support a stateless policy. So you, you mean if I want to allow uh, outbound connection, I will also need to install an ingress policy to allow its uh, reverse uh, file table. Is uh, that true? Uh, yes, we should be sure that the, the reverse direction traffic will also be allowed uh, to cooperate properly with the connection track. And so, okay. so, so you, you, if your default policy is a low uh, and you don't need to, uh, to, 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 to manually install any other policies. I see. Okay. All right. So that was a, a great presentation and a lot of very good questions. But uh, unfortunately, we also have uh, another topic to discuss for today. So I have to ask if there is uh, any final question for Shenkai, please ask now. Otherwise, we can always follow up in the Antria uh, channel in the Kubernetes Slack. And uh, Shanghai, um, I don't know if you already joined the channel, but uh, you know, if you are there, there will surely be some follow up with the members of the Antria team concerning uh, how to integrate uh, XMask in Antria. Okay. So we can move to the next topic. I think that we have uh, Kumar presenting uh, Windows uh, OVS containerization. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, please go ahead. Thanks. Is my screen visible? Yes, yes. Yes. Thanks. Hello, everyone. So, uh, I Kumar Adish will deliver a short presentation on this topic, and we have Windows OVS containerization, and it is for container D runtime only. So, the motivation of this task is uh, currently Windows OVS is running as a host service rather than inside container that we have in uh, Linux. So, it is different from that. So we propose to run the user space OBS processes, that is the vSwitch D and the DB server inside OBS container in the entry agent pod uh, to align with the design of Linux and to have OBS upgrade advantage. 
So the design would be um, that we have the entry agent pod, entry agent container, and the new container, we have the entry OBS container, which has the two OBS user space processes, VSwitchD and DB server. One thing is different from Linux is that the OBS driver should be configured on the Windows node uh, before uh, before installing the entry agent pod. So that would be done through scripts. So that is done currently, but currently uh, also the user space OBS processes are uh, started as a Windows service on the Windows node. But if now if we want to uh, run the OBS user space processes inside the container, then only OBS driver would be uh, installed on the Windows node in kernel space and the the, the OBS service uh, part would be configuration of OBS processes as a Windows service uh, would be skipped so that uh, when you install the entry agent pod uh, we have the entry OBS container and that would start the two OBS processes. few things we had uh, while doing this um, a new windows obs image was created for entry obs container windows container uh, we had new windows obs image based on server core because uh, obs user space processes had some dependencies uh, such as OpenSSL and uh, vc redist and that were not able to run on the image based on um, nano server so currently entry of windows base image is based on nano server and on that we cannot have the dependencies of the obs which are required to run the obs command so we needed um, base image based on server core so for that reason uh, we have created a new image specific for uh, obs container in the case of windows then uh, uh, we now also have a new YAML file and named Andrea Windows OBS container dot YAML to support running OBS container inside the entry agent pod. So now in Windows case, we have now three YAML files: one Andrea Windows dot YAML, another Andrea Windows container dot YAML, and this is the third one, Andrea Windows OBS container dot YAML. And this is the only one in which we have. Uh, support for running obvious inside the container in the case of container d runtime uh, another thing is that the when the obvious processes start for the first time there is a com.db file um, configuration file for obvious so this file is not stored on the container this file is created and stored uh, on the windows host to ensure that the obvious port information won't be deleted so when first time uh, OBS container starts, so it first checks that whether the com.db file is uh, present or not on a specific path on the host that is on the Windows node. If that com.db file is not present, it will create it. And if it is already present, it would use that. So um, in restart case, uh, we would use the existing com.db file and not create the new one and if it and if the obvious container is starting for the first time on that node then a uh, new com.db file would be created so uh, this file is persisted on the host uh, apart from this we have made some changes in the scripts to support this obvious containerization and uh, uh, this feature is only supported in container d runtime as i told initially due to the use of host process feature so uh, uh, currently uh, uh, the path where uh, this com.db file is uh, stored these are all um, already created by the scripts but in future we we uh, we intend to install the this entry obvious container in a clean host environment and the kernel, uh, the Windows OBS driver installed in the kernel space is also um, currently done, uh, already pre-configured through scripts. But in future, we also intend to 
uh, install it from the container if it is not present on the host. So um, this is about the task we have done. If you have any questions. Uh, hi, Kumar. I have one question. Yeah. You said that uh, the new image was made because the base image was nano server and we require server code. So instead yeah. of having two image, can't we change the base image of the existing image to server code? We can do that, but there's a huge difference between the size of uh, server core and nano server. So if we are ready to go with that, and then uh, we can do that because uh, the currently the uh, base image in the nano server is also used for um, other two YAMLs which we have, Antria Windows.yml and Antria Windows Container D.yml. In that case, we don't support running OBS inside the container. So it would be uh, useless to have uh, OBS processes in that image. Uh, if we want to have same image for both, then we need to maintain two base images, one with the current one and another base image with the server core. So maintainability would be a little difficult then, and the size would be size anyway. Uh, currently, also we, uh, anyone would not run only entry agent uh, container. Uh, so if anyone wants to install this OBS container, then they have to download the two images and combine the size of two images. Uh, it is equivalent to having one image of the bigger size. So we um, have to maintain two base images. That would be the issue. So like would maintaining two different base image would create any issue? Like if we have two base images, like because I guess that the size of two different image combined is lesser. Yeah, uh, that is a decision to be taken um, whether we are ready to maintain two base images or not. If we are uh, okay with that, then we can go ahead with that. Thank you. Do we, uh, do we have any other question? Waiting a few more seconds. And it appears that we don't have any other question. Since we have a few minutes in the in a, more available in the, to this meeting, if you have uh, any other topic that you would like to bring up, or I don't know, perhaps any other question regarding the X mask presentation that we just saw, please go ahead. I will wait as usual about thirty seconds for you to ask any question or bring up any additional topic. If not, we'll close the meeting here. All right, it appears then that there are no more points, no more questions for today. So that might be all for today. Thanks as usual for attending it. And most importantly, thanks for uh, today's presenters for their contribution. And I wish everyone a good afternoon, good day, or a good evening. Or in the case of all the folks in Palo Alto, good night. Thanks a lot for attending and talk to you in two weeks' time. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. 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 Thanks. Bye.